Hello and welcome to the IOL Sport Podcast with me, John Goliath, and I've got my colleagues Michael Sherman and Lunga Biela in Johannesburg and Cape Town, respectively. I'm in the lovely town of Paul, um, enjoying a bit of sunshine today after a cold front that put some snow on the mountain. But the action has been hot on the sporting fields. We've had a great month so far, guys, um, in, or last month. Uh, we're in October already. Yes, the time has really flown. We've had the Springboks going. Lunga, they looked really good o- over the last month in the rugby championship. Um, yeah, no, I mean, they cemented their place as probably as the best team in the world, despite losing the ranking as number one, which frankly doesn't make sense. Irish fans um, won't be happy, though. Eh? They are number one. They are the real number ones, Irish fans. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that whole system just doesn't make any sense. You know, how can you yeah. beat the All Blacks twice, beat Australia twice, beat, beat Argentina and win a trophy, and then drop down behind a team that hasn't played since, what, like... Since no, they played us in June, yeah. Yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Number one without a trophy. Yeah. Number one without the semi-final. Never played that trophy. Never mind a trophy. Yeah. Michael, what stood out for you uh, as far as the box were concerned um, during the rugby championship? Um, I I think that uh, the youngsters coming through, how Rassi blended them in was, was a standout for me. Um, what was your sort of take on uh, how the box went in the rugby championship? Yeah, no, they were brilliant, especially, uh, like you said, the youngsters. Uh, Sasha uh, was a great addition at fly half. You know, he really kind of, if he hadn't already, you know, he made his debut against Wales. But in the rugby championship, he really showed what he's got. And even um, Manu Libok, you know, um, after he missed the kick in Argentina, uh, he came back the next week, relieved of the kicking duties and produced an exemplary display. Um, so even, you know, that, it does seem that he, for me, um, you know, he battles under pressure when the kicks, when the, the vital kicks need to be slotted. But, um, you know, he stepped up the next week and produced a fine display, um, running display of rugby and tactical, his tactical awareness. Um, but that also showed that, you know, as as much flack as he took the week before, you know, he could rebound. So. Show and, character, yeah. yeah, the character of him and just the whole squad uh, in combination. It, it's actually, they, they so, uh, as for someone who doesn't uh, follow rugby as closely as I have in previous years, this, this team really stood out and made, made me take notice. Yeah, on, on money, I, I also think that maybe it's not really pressure situations because we've seen it in the past in kicking goals to win matches I so think it's in thing. the champions cup last year from the touchline yeah exactly and the urc two years ago in the semi-final yeah i think it's a technique issue uh i'm not i, I, can't I, think, it's, yeah, I think it's a head issue really because it's i can't a... profess to be um at uh, a goal kicking guru whatever i played lock at school mate <laughs> the shortest log of all time um but i was but i think it, it just his run-up for me looks like it's not a, um angling with the ball whatever we can maybe get people in to let us know but yeah mani Lubok, i think it's a he's a he's a really a real special player and the way rassi backed him i think it just shows uh that rassi sees something in him that maybe a lot of the people that give him flack on social media and i think that was quite disgusting some of the things i saw mm-hmm. um then uh, so we need to give credit uh, to to rassi for 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 backing him um but then also the legend even it's a bit becoming the most kept springbok i mean what a phenomenal player this guy mm-hmm. Is, I think he's probably going to be the, the greatest springbok of all time, Lunga. Um, I think he, he he might go on to just be the greatest player the, the game's ever seen. Mm. Um, just like how he's managed to just um, stay injury relatively injury-free, um, you know, look after himself, 
and just keep up the standards. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he could just be one of the greatest players the game's ever seen. I mean, um, he's, he's still running around like a 20-year-old. Yeah. He, he's, 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 he's carrying his athleticism. In, I mean, he competes in the line-out. He's fierce when it comes to the mauling. He's, he's, he's a very important part of, of the Springboks' mauling. Um, he's also, he carries the ball, he tackles, he runs around the field. He's, he's just phenomenal. The, I mean, the way he's, his engine. He's, he's on the wrong side of 30, but I mean, I, I definitely see him going to, like, being a big part in the next World Cup. Um, he's, he's definitely going to be in the plan there. Yeah, but I think the way that Rassi is managing these guys, and, and we spoke about blending in, I mean, you rarely see these guys play two games in a row, never mind a full game, and they yeah. get rotated so much. I think it's only Peter Steff, the toy, that maybe has a massive workload, but he was also arrested for the, for the game in Argentina. But I think genuinely it's part of the plan now, Michael, to to get these guys to the World Cup because this is the golden generation of Springboks, but most of them on the wrong side of 30. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at uh, the core of the team, even Sia, you know, is the same, I think he's the same age as uh, Irvin. Um, yeah, they, they're going to be like mid to late 30s come the next World Cup. But even, you know, going back to the beginning of the rag well not the beginning but when uh, we're about to play new zealand at, at ellis park Evan had that injury scare um ahead of the match and then he came through late he was a late addition to the team on the bench and he hasn't had that doesn't look like he's had any um, flare-up of what uh, i think it was a knee injury that he had um or some leg injury and he's just come through unscathed and uh, unscathed and he was really a power player during the during the rugby championship so it just shows you like even with the lock crisis we had with all the injuries to other other guys um there's always guys that are going to step up and um to take over if they need to you know it's just and there's so and that goes for the young players as well because there's if the experienced guys aren't there you're going to get a youngster um making the step up too so it's you know it's <laughs> It's hard to see the Springboks not dominating for right up until and maybe during the next World Cup. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But now speaking of World Cup, the the Proteus, obviously we all suffered that heartbreak uh, in the West Indies against India. And now over the last couple of months, they've also tried to blood a couple of youngsters, get some, refresh the squad, especially ahead of the... Um, the next T20 World Cup, which is in a couple of years' time, and, and next year's obviously the uh, um, the Champions Cup. Um, are we looking at uh, sort of the Proteas um, in the same uh, vein as, as the Springboks? Michael, you did a piece a couple of, couple of weeks ago about the depth in South African cricket is not probably as, as great as the depth as far as rugby is concerned. Um, what is your take on that, especially after um, series defeats to the West Indies, um, also another series defeat to Afghanistan, um, and uh, sharing a T20 series with Ireland? Um, what is your take uh, uh, and, and on the Proteas at the moment? I don't think you, there's any you can compare them at all to the Springboks. Uh, it's difficult to see what kind of place um, the Proteas are in because you take out guys like um, Heinrich Klaas and David Miller, Kakisa Rabada and even Marco Janssen, you, there, there's a couple big holes in the South African team at the moment and what we've seen against Afghanistan firstly in those ODIs, we were completely outplayed in the first two ODIs and then we won the dead rubber um it was quite scary to see that you know we it's not like um that afghanistan were, did well as an underdog you from the start of the match it looked like they were the favorites and they played like favorites and the 
you know the the second the second tier or the fringe players coming into the Proteus setup, um, especially in that Afghan Afghanistan series, didn't look like they had it at all. Um, yeah, it, it was better in the T20 series. I think we made like 190 odd or something um, against Ireland, and it was a good batting display. Um, and then we won the first ODI yesterday uh, against Ireland. Uh, it's nice to see a guy like uh, Ryan Rickleton in the runs. You know, like that's one of the fringe players because you know if a guy like, let's say, you know, uh, Timber Bavuma. Um, Make, is in the runs. It, it's kind of what you expect. You want um, he he's the ODI skipper, you know, and you expect him to stand up and contribute. But you want these guys who haven't cemented their places to start contributing, and especially, you know, our top six. Um, it's it's difficult to have faith in them at the moment. Um, even you know after yesterday's ODI, you know, Tristan Stubbs also had a good knock. Uh, he scored uh, 80 odd, um, but still, even the this match that we we won yesterday, we were like, what is it? it was, we were 39 for three, so it looked like yeah. here we go again, you know. Um, yeah. And then we did have the two guys that stood up and put a partnership together, but um, sure, I don't know um, how much faith anyone can have in the depth in South African men's cricket at the moment. Um, we, yeah, we're going through a bit of a betting crisis. Um, I, I, I just think that um, with, with the quality of our domestic cricket, um, we're struggling to find, um, you know, guys that can hold in innings, guys that can, you know, bet right through. Um, so I, I, I think that somewhere, somewhere along the line, we, we need to address just the, the the quality of our of, of our of our domestic cricket um because if if, if you look at at, at, at uh, the you know the t20 side of, of things um with with the sa20 um it's it it, it has in in a way sort of improved our um t20 side you know uh, we, we we reached a we reached a world cup final um but on 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 the one day side you know it i, I think they, they they're still there still needs um, some work to be done there. Yeah, obviously there's um, there's a lot of guys out being rested or playing in other tournaments around the world. Um, I think at the moment that we need to find guys who can actually take games by the scruff of the neck, like a a Tristan Stubbs. I really enjoy his attitude, the way he plays the game. And the confidence he plays it with, I mean, it also helps that the guy is over six foot <laughs> and very intimidating to bowl at. But yeah, he's 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 a he's a guy that, and and I think that's why they picked him at number three also in the test team because they want somebody to go out there, walk out, barrel chested. And I think we are lacking a lot of our cricketers in this country as maybe lacking that sort of belief and. I don't know why um, that is the case because if you look at our rugby players, these guys are just, it's almost like they are bred to believe um, that you're not going to tell me today, um, you're not going to dominate me today, that sort of attitude. And I think that is where a lot of our guys maybe lack, maybe are we too soft in, in, in cricket-wise, not soft um it's probably not the right word to use but also a bit scared maybe to take the game to the people and sledge and yeah i don't know i think it's, it's also that you know yeah like, like you mentioned you, you need that bit of cock of that cockiness um because you know as a, as a young rugby player growing up you think yeah geez you know if, uh, I, I want to be the best player in the world um but as a young cricketer you know you think oh you know um i hope to get a, a provincial contract i hope to you know be, be, become a, um, like a a mainstay in the in 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 the provincial side i i, I don't think there's a there's a lot of youngsters who grow up wanting to be the best um you know batsman in the world bowler in the world um i think sort of like the the, the mentality of it 
needs to sort of come from you know from that side because as a young as a young rugby player, you know if you go put on you know like a Paul Jim jersey or Paul Rose jersey or you know one of those schools, you already know that flip you know I I've got the opportunity to to become you know like an icon like one of the best players in the world if if I you know reach my potential so I, I think that's where sort of cricket and rugby differ. Mm. No, that's true. That's true. And now we go on to Bafana Bafana um, to sort of end off with our discussion about the big three. They are playing the Democratic Republic of Congo on the 11th of October in an AFCON qualifier. You see, I remember going to the Congo in uh, 2014 for a Bafana game where 19-year-old Rivaldo could see him made his debut um in the at in defense that day and i can tell you guys that driving into the stadium and we drove just behind the team bus the people were like um putting their hands on the bus throwing things at the bus it was very intimidating going in there mm. and it was like a fifteen thousand seater but there was about forty thousand people in that place and it was rocking but then I think probably one of the most composed performances I've ever seen from a Bafana team, and that was under Sheikh's Mashaba with um, Kutsi at the back there. Um, yeah, that gave me a lot of hope that day. But then a year later, they <laughs> got, got <laughs> Afcon, got bundled out to the group stage again. And that seemed to be the story of Bafana. But not this Bafana, eh? There seems to uh, be a bit of a change in mentality uh, from Hugo Bruce. Change of, we saw their run to to the to Afcon. Uh, bitterly disappointed they could have won that semi final against Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, but now they have a tough assignment coming against Congo. But I think they should get the job done. Yeah, I reckon they. I mean, they 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 good enough to get the job done. They. Um... You know the leagues. The league has started again, so players are sort of more match prepared than they were for the last um, two qualifiers. So I, I think if 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 they just stick to their plans, I think they should get. Um, I think um, four points would be um, 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 an ambitious target from the from the two games. Um, yeah. I think that, um, six points is, I think, unlikely um or maybe beat them here get a draw over there um put us in a good place in the group but yeah i think the, it's a, it's, a, it's a good looking team yeah i've really been impressed with uh talente mbata coming off the bench in the last two matches and doing the business i mean we're scoring goals from midfield now we're scoring goals from everywhere the spafana team we used to pray for these this even when Benny was still playing, the girls were normally few and far between. Um, so I, I it's a, he's he's picked sort of a, a a a team that is it is bringing through now. Um, and he's added a few youngsters over the last couple of months. Um, what do you think? Um, is the future like for the likes of Percy Tau? He was in the preliminary and squad. But now he's been left out again of the the main squad for the games. Do you think Percy Tau's name uh, days are numbered, or does he still have something to offer Bafana? He, he's still got a bit um, to offer. I just think he needs to um, just play regularly, be more consistent. Um, I mean, he's a when he's on form, he's a he's a very he's a very very good player. Um, he just needs to to keep that form up, be more consistent. Um, but I mean, the the young players coming through, you know, that that might just light, might just like, you know, light something in him, just ma make him, you know, push him even further. But yeah, no, it's it's the youngsters coming through. It's it's impressive, um, and you know, I think Bruce is, is 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 you know building a side that can, you know, do things. Who are some of the youngsters that is impressed you? Um. Fugang has um, done very well. Um, he's a very, just like a skillful player. 
Mm. Um, I remember last year there was, I think, who, who was it? Um, one of the coaches actually compared him to um, Laminia Ma. Wow. Which is that's quite a big uh, thing to say, but I mean, he, yeah, where, we where, tend, when he's, when he's on the board in you know. this country, eh, where we, where we uh, compare guys, I mean, who was called Drogba? Bongani oh, Dulula. Um, um, yeah, Bongani Dulula. He was called Drogba. Yeah. yeah. So we tend to do that early on, but I mean, I've also seen him. I saw him play last week um, against Polokwane City for Pirates. Yeah. And he looked um, really good. Yeah. Looked really good. Good on the ball. <laughs> and then he stood on the ball. And then I thought, oh, man. I, I no think he, just, he, he needs to cut out a bit of the, the, the showboat. Show but yeah. Yeah, no, I think he's, uh, I think he's probably the, the most exciting young player we've had since, I don't know, since Percy Dow, maybe. Um, better than, better than Saleng. Um, yeah, no, he's, he's, I think he's ahead of him. Yes, the yeah. Pirates have got some talent there, eh? Yeah, no, the, the, uh, the, 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 and there's also um, Masangani as well. Um, many are saying he's the new Tempazwane, but still haven't seen know. that. Um, he just yeah. needs to be more consistent. Um, yeah. And then there's the skipper at the back, um, you know, 32 years old, and he's still... Um, I think he could go on for another three, four, five years. Um, you know. Yeah, Bra Ronwin. Yeah. Yeah, he's phenomenal. And and uh, yeah, I hope he gets a shout eh, in the Ballon d'Or uh, and for the for the goalkeeping award. Uh, I think he's, he's, he's in with a good shout because... He if, does if penalty at... saves, eh? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, he, he definitely, he's definitely in with a good shot. Yeah, guys, in TN8 final, um, Michael, it's a, a big one for Stellenbosch, who I've uh, went to see this week um, during the media day. And I can tell you, these guys have fabulous facilities. Um, and they really look the part. We've seen it on the pitch. Stevie Barker, um, what a coach. I think he's the longest serving coach now in the PSL. He's, 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 been, co he's been in charge of them for, since 2017. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing period to be a coach in the PSL. For that is ridiculous time. if you compare other guys getting sacked after three games. Was Pablo, <laughs> Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, was he sacked after three games? How many yes. games? Three games. Three and he did well with the side last season. And, okay, they, they three losses this season, but, you know, it's three games and he's out the door. Is that panic stations? Um, Tenor that... wouldn't survive in the PSL. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But now... That's that's the relegation, but now we're talking about the cup final. Um, in terms of Stellenbosch FC, like I said, Stevie Barker has been there forever, and there's just a stability there that um, you can see things are well organized. Looks like a really well-run club. Um, they lost Ikram Reynas, but they but they got Leto Nolo Mojela who's been pumping in the goals. And uh, they've got Andre de Jong, who I think is a brilliant player also in midfield. They can actually spoil Pirates' party in Durban this weekend. Yeah, well, uh, it's actually interesting, um, you know, that it's Pirates Stellenbosch in the final because, you know, last season, uh, pa Pirates uh, got over them, uh, beat them over two legs in the MTN8, but they lost to them both times in the league. So I don't know if that's going to be a factor or if like it's going to get inside the heads of the Pirates player and even um, Jose Rivero. You know, um, I think there could be a lot of mental games and a lot of pressure that they put on themselves. And because Stellenbosch are such a well-oiled unit, like you say. Um, Pirates will have to actually be at their best 
just to just to compete with Stellenbosch, I think. So I, I, it's hard to even say who's a favorite for this clash, despite, you know, being Orlando Pirates, the Soweto Giants, you know. It's, it's, I think it's going to be a very good final, and how <laughs> I'm not brave enough to make a call on who I think is going to win. And both Lunga, both teams love Moses Babida. I mean, Stellenbosch have been playing there now. They, they're against the season because Danny Craven was messed up by uh, the rugby earlier this year, and now they've been playing there. So they are comfortable there. Pirates are obviously comfortable there because they've won um, their last two cup finals, MTN8 finals played there. But obviously the ghosts are going to be in the stands. They're going to be probably about 10 to 1 and even 100 to 1 maybe in terms of Stellenbosch fans. I know Stellenbosch are, are, they are fans going to the game from Cape Town, a lot of them, but they're going to be outnumbered. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I reckon with in terms of crowd size, I think Pirates will be, should be the favourites because that crowd is going to be able to just, you know, push them on. But yeah, on the field, it, uh, I think it, 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 it might be an even an, an even affair. Um, mm. But it, it, yeah, it sh- I mean, it should be it should be a big one. I think Pirates would probably outnumber any club in the country apart from um, Kaiser Chiefs. Um, so I think for 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 Stellenbosch to maybe get something out of the game, they'll they'll need to be. To, to to just be on top of them and just silence that crowd and just get going. Yeah. The big the big duel is gonna be Saleng against Basadin. I think. Uh, um yeah. Basadin was rumored to be going to Chiefs earlier this season. Um yesterday the goal he scored against Cape Town City the other day. It was about a what's a sixty five meter screamer. Not that Darren Keat um, covered himself in glory there, almost being in the edge of his box. <laughs> then probably didn't expect him to kick it. But, I mean, that's going to be one deal. If Basudin can keep a guy like Saleng quiet and Mufugeng quiet, it could be uh, it could be a long day for Pirates. It, it, it's, I think with, with Pirates, it's it's about that, that, that trio, you know, in just behind the... The, the, the striker, you know, um, Saleng, King, and um, what's in name, Masangani. If they can just keep those three quiet and just try the tap of, you know, the, the supply to to Mabasa up front, you know, the, uh, um, Stellenbosch will be will be in 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 a in a, in a good place. That's the MTN8, um, and now on to the English Premier League. Lungard was a Bad weekend for you. Really bad weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's it's just one of those... I think it's one of those um, games that come every... that seem to come every week for United now. It's just... Yeah, I, I, was, I, I, I was hoping you wouldn't say every now and then because <laughs> it's like a weekly occurrence now. Um, United. Yeah, I'm, just, um, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that uh, Spurs are absolutely just starting to look like last year's team who started the season again. Um, and then the the football we are playing, we club you guys. But what do you think is wrong? You've been this week. You've been ten arc in. Um, I think the red card obviously played a big part. Um, it just changed the game. I think if you lose your captain, if you lose your best player um, so early in the game, it's just obviously going to to have a big impact. I think we were we were going to lose anyways, like maybe one two one or maybe two nil. Um, but I think once um, Bruno got sent off, it just changed the game, took the legs out of the team, and just yeah. Um, they were never gonna show any fighting spirit. What did you make of the Benny McCarthy's comments um, of the weekend that uh, the players are lazy, some of the players are lazy, and then the coach doesn't have the passion or the fire? Was it that uh, was it a bit of bitterness there? I mean, he obviously um, 
contract wasn't renewed or do you think it was like, no uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't i think maybe it could have been just how the comments were sort of interpreted um mm. i think you, you could maybe interpret them a different way mm. um i don't think he sort of meant that you know ah, this guy lacks passion he i think he could have been a suggestion maybe that you know the players need to see that more from the coach that 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 um you know that passion that fire and currently with 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 ten hog you know he's i i don't think they've been he's been showing any of that side you know he's yeah. um for instance if you if you compare to how fergie was on the on the touch line he was yelling he was you know yelling at the ref yelling at the players where ten hog sort of just stands there with his you know with his arms crossed just yeah. watching the game um so I, I think you know I, I i don't think it's it's a it's i mean every manager every head coach is is you know different um they, they've got their own way of of of, of how they approach things and mm. yeah no if, if if that works for for ten hog then you know then he should just do it but like yeah, no, the, the, the players yeah. have just been, they've been flat <laughs> for the last two seasons. Um, yes, um, it's it's difficult for me to uh, to see where United is in terms of what's Ten Hag's plan. I mean, we, we spoke about this offline. Uh, if you look at Spurs, they've got a clear identity. This manager doesn't give a mm -mm about defense. It's all out attack. He, he doesn't even play with a DM. No, but I, I, I think with, with, with him, it's that um, the, the, the way that he wants to play, you know, he like hold up from the front, I mean, from the back, um, and just keep it tight. But if you, 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 if, if, you know, in the final third, you lose the ball and everyone's out of position. Um, it, I think it's 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 been a um, like a, a a very regular occurrence over the last two seasons where players lose the ball um, and then if you look behind him, everyone's already you know everyone's pushing up, pushing so up. everyone's out of position. Like the the goal on on Saturday, no, on Sunday. Make you find a win. Yeah, that run. Um, Surely somebody had to pull a shirt there or or tackle him or. Sacrifice a yellow card. It's it's. But is that is that why Casemiro is looking so bad? Because obviously, when Casemiro is such an intelligent footballer, strong footballer, okay, he's getting on in years, but now he's being sort of isolated there. He needs to deal with when they lose the ball. He needs to deal with uh, sort of players running at him and um, and obviously. It's, uh, get, uh, trying to fill holes that um, other players have vacated. Yeah, I know it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you're much happier because your Dutch coach has had a good start to the season for Liverpool. Um, and uh, you guys are right up there at the moment. Only one defeat against Nottingham Forest. Uh, but a good start. You're very happy with the start Arnie Slot has made. Yeah, no, he's been fantastic. Um, and but you know, like the last couple of seasons as well, Liverpool have started very well and been top of the table sort of halfway through, and then City just comes through. And you got to you got to figure that you know it's the guy's first season. This uh, top four finish should be the should be the goal. I don't see Liverpool really contending. I mean, it's probably Salah's last season, and you know got. Still got a decent squad, but I can't see Liverpool finishing much higher than fourth or maybe third. Um, and also just, you know, got Crystal Palace coming up and um, I think we lost to them at Anfield uh, at the end of last season or in April. So it's, it's I've, I've always found Crystal Palace a bit of a bogey team for, for Liverpool. 
So yeah, we're top of the table now, but sure, I don't know for how much longer. I, I'm not, I'm not filled with faith, uh, even though like it, it has been a good start. You're very pessimistic, eh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the nature of things. It's the the hope that kills you. So don't want to hope anymore. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Lunga. We've had an absolutely outstanding uh, chat today. Enjoy the MTN8 final. Enjoy the URC this weekend. It should be a blast. But don't also forget about the Springboks women's team. They are up against Australia on Saturday. And then on Friday, the Proteus start off. Proteus women, they start off their World Cup campaign against the West Indies. That's it from us. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.